For some, this might be the most challenging part of the creed. For how can we believe that the church is one, when, in the words of Samuel J. Stone's famous hymn, it is by schisms rent asunder, by heresies distressed? Or how can we declare that the church is holy when so much harm has been done in its name? The answer might be to focus on God's creation of the church, on his sustaining of it, rather than on the way particular churches or individuals have distorted its identity. In 1 Peter chapter 2, it's clear that it's God's activity that is decisive for the church. It is God who builds believers into a spiritual house. God who gathers disparate individuals and makes them a people. God who transforms them with his mercy. It is primarily by God's grace that the Church is one, holy, Catholic and apostolic. But in each generation, the Church itself is called to live out that identity. In a marriage service, after the vows have been made and the rings exchanged, the priest stands before the couple and proclaims that they are husband and wife. From that moment onwards, the man and woman are husband and wife. But this is also who they become, as minute by minute, day by day, they put into practice the sacrificial way of love and life set out for them in the vows. In the same way, through God's proclamation, the Church is already one holy, Catholic and apostolic, a holy nation. Even so, the Church is to strive to live out this calling, to reflect its designation as holy, for example, by ridding itself of malice, guile, insincerity, envy and slander. These two verses illustrate this paradox of the Church's identity, that it already is, and is becoming, holy, one, Catholic, apostolic. <laughs>